What's going on YouTube? My name is Zach with Android Digest and today I'm reviewing a detachable tablet and that is the HP Chromebook X2 and this is the 11 inch version that just released in 2021. Now this device released at $600 but I've seen some insane sales on it so a lot of you might be interested in it and a lot of you might be comparing it to that Lenovo Chromebook Duet that came out a year ago but also the new Lenovo Chromebook Duet that's out or even the Asus CM3 that I recently reviewed. So I'm going to do some comparisons and I'm going to do a full review to let you know if this device is worth your hard-earned money. So with all that being said, let's get straight into this review and let's get it going. All right, so this is the HP Chromebook X2. And it's a very interesting device because it retails for $600. But again, recently I saw it as low as $400. So I can't guarantee that the prices are gonna continue to be this low, but it is a red hot market right now because the Lenovo Chromebook Duet is also coming out with a 13 inch detachable tablet. And a lot of you might be in Android world. Again, this is Android Digest after all. And I love to review Chromebooks and Chromebooks Chrome tablets because they give you a lot of similar experiences because this can run Android apps, but Chrome OS is a little bit better than Android when it comes to productivity. Now there's a lot to like about this tablet and one area you're gonna love is the design. So you do have a tablet that is pretty darn lightweight and thin and it does come with this case here. Now this is a magnetic case. It's very similar to the magnetic case on the Chromebook Duet or the Asus CM3. The magnets are very, very strong. You just line it up there and just put it on and right here you have a kickstand now this kickstand will go back quite a ways so you get all types of great viewing angles on your tablet this also has a fingerprint sensor on the top of the tablet you also have your volume up and down there is an LTE model that is available so that is one thing you're gonna see out there you do see two USB-C ports here and you're gonna see the pin it does come with a pin and this pin does magnetically attach to the side of this tablet so that's an awesome Awesome thing to see there again there's so much to like with this because when you get a tablet that has a detachable keyboard on the bottom you get these little magnets here that attach a keyboard you have a keyboard that even attaches to the tablet magnetically which is an awesome thing to see two USB-C ports that's a little bit more than I normally see on a tablet you get a nice pin here that is flat on one side magnetizes to the tablet so there's a lot to like about this device now I've got to say the build quality on this device is absolutely amazing. It's made of aluminum all the way around the actual tablet. It feels good and it's nice that when you compare it to the original X2, this is a little more lightweight and a little more compact. So I really do prefer an 11 inch tablet for various reasons. I think it's a pretty awesome thing as far as a lightweight device. So there's really a lot to like about this design and it's made of very premium materials and all of those things to like, it does continue when you look at the display of this device. So this has a 2K resolution on the display. It's a 2160 by 1440 resolution and it has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio which is much better for productivity. So I love the display on this device. I cannot say enough. No it is not OLED and yes there is a new Chromebook Duet coming a 13 inch model that will have an OLED screen but this screen is very very bright. I believe it gets over 400 nits and also you have a great 2K resolution. So this is one of the best screens I've seen in a tablet or on a Chromebook in general. Now, no, it's not 120 hertz on the refresh rate or anything like that, but still it looks great. The colors are extremely accurate and the resolution is phenomenal. So when you get a tablet form factor, it is much better for entertainment. And this device is phenomenal for entertainment because the screen looks so darn good. It gets so darn bright and the battery life is pretty good as well. Now that does vary from person to person, but I'd say you'd get around eight hours or so. But again, it can vary based on what you're doing on the device. Now you might be wondering how this device performs and it does perform much better than that old Lenovo Chromebook Duet or that old Asus CM3. So this again has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 7C and it is the first gen, but it doesn't really matter. They're very similar and the performance is good, but it's not 
great. So this doesn't perform as good as an i3 processor or an i5 or an i7. Now, when we're talking about using a tablet for basic tasks and entertainment, if you're just having three or four Chrome tabs open and flipping between that and Disney Plus and all these things, it's gonna be very, very fast for you. So I really enjoyed the performance on this device. I only really saw a little bit of lag on certain websites that really just took a lot more power, like the Samsung website, for example. There's just so much going on on that website and I don't think it's made very well. So things were just a little bit slower on a website like that. So just keep in mind, this is not a powerhouse. This is not even an i3. It's not an Intel Pentium. It's not even an i5 or an i7. But for tablet stuff, I think it's gonna do very well. And I'm just happy to see a device that's gonna be around $400, at least when it's on sale. That is better than that Asus CM3 because I loved the Asus CM3, but it was almost $370 at its retail price and it did not have a 2K screen. It did not have a processor like this. It was much, much slower. So to see this and to see it go on sale very shortly after launch for around $400, that's amazing when you see, okay, I can deal with the performance and I can deal with it being average because at least it's better than those other devices and at least you get an amazing screen on it, right? So there's a lot to like about this device overall, right? I mentioned it has a stylus with it and by the way, I'm not much of a drawer, but if you do draw on this tablet, the stylus does fairly well. It's not gonna be as good as something like the Tab S7. Again, it doesn't have that 120 hertz refresh rate, but I did find it was good for basic notes and it was very responsive. And I'm telling you, this magnet is very, very strong on the stylus. So if you're a stylus person, I think you're really going to like that. But one thing that I'm going to talk about here, the one thing that to me is inexcusable that some of you might not find a big deal is this keyboard. Now, we have to keep in mind, this is an 11 inch tablet, right? So this keyboard is not gonna be super big. And a lot of you are thinking about that old HP X2 that had a bigger keyboard and it was a better keyboard on that device in my opinion. And you're thinking about that device and remember, you can only fit so big of a keyboard in a smaller tablet, right? So they wanted this device to be more portable. I get all that. So we have to give them a break with the fact that these keys are not very big, okay? So there's not a ton of big keys here. The travel isn't great. I think they gave it a really big trackpad and honestly, I think the trackpad could have been a little bit smaller to really give us a little bit of a better key size, but the keys are still good. I think this is a very similar keyboard to that Asus CM3. Now, I think this keyboard is a little cheap. I do think it feels a little plasticky, but again, when you compare it to things like the Galaxy Tab S7 or other portable keyboards that are around this price point, I think this is gonna be a better keyboard overall, but there's a fatal flaw to it. And I think it's fatal. It's fatal to me. And you might say, oh, Zach, that's that's not a big deal. And I realize that I am not the end all be all for people, right? So if you're watching this and you say that's not a big deal, great. Then I'm telling you, this is a device to buy for you, especially if you see it on sale. But this is the one flaw that bothers me is the trackpad clicks accidentally all of the time. So right here, I'm going to make the noise here for you. If you could hear it. And if you see that, you see, I'm barely putting pressure. I'm just doing a little bit of bending, not even a lot. And you're hearing trackpad clicks and a lot of them. Now that is an issue. Now, if you have this on a table and the table is supporting it, you're not gonna have issues with the trackpad because the table is supporting the bottom, right? So on the left and the right hand side of the trackpad, the table below it is supporting it. So if you have the device on your lap, and it really depends on the angle you're at, by the way. You might not experience it at certain angles, but if you do have a different angle and it doesn't have good support, yes, I would say that most of you are gonna experience that issue. Now, a lot of people are saying maybe in their heads, well, what if it was just you? And you know what? Maybe it was just me, and if it was, that's fine. But I do know another YouTuber mentioned it. I know a lot of people in his comments. I know a lot of people in comments that I've made on other channels. A lot of people are experiencing this issue. So either this is an issue with all of the devices, or it's an issue with at least half of them. But there is some good news again. Not everyone is going to experience this because a lot of people only use their device on a desk. A lot of you are gonna have good support for your keyboard and you're not gonna have to worry about it. And some of you might see this device at $200 off and you might just think, hey, why don't I just buy a $30 keyboard, like a Logitech keyboard, a good quality keyboard, a Bluetooth keyboard, and 
call it a day. And that's something you could definitely do, right? So I don't want to just damper on the parade of this device. There's a lot for you to consider when you think about this device. So I really don't know how to package it, right? I did not want to hide the issues I had and just pretend they weren't there to try to sell you with affiliate links. I do make money on affiliate links, by the way, they're in the description, but I try to keep it real. I try to keep it honest with my audience. So I had to tell you about these issues, but are they a big deal? To some of you, yes. Some of you will say, it is so stupid, of course this isn't a big issue, right? Because it doesn't even register clicks, at least most of the time, when you have trackpad issues, right? So I think most of you will see that it's not a big deal. Some of you, it will be a really big deal. To me, I am such a picky tech nerd. So for me, I would not want this device to replace my laptop. Also, there's one other minor flaw again, and that is the processor. And I think a lot of us for $400 would hope to have a little bit of a better processor or even for five or $600 especially. So no, I would not buy this device at $600. Even if everything was functioning perfectly, I do think they overpriced it a little bit. But for $500 or less, I think it is a pretty good deal. And I really think the only differentiator for you should be, are you going to use this device on your lap or are you going to use it on a table more and if you use it on a table more the only other thing you have to consider is power right if you're going to use this device primarily as a chromebook and a laptop well just buy a good chromebook there are chromebooks that are much faster that have great battery life and you won't have to deal with all this stuff right you'll get a much better keyboard experience but if you're going to use this device primarily as a tablet for entertainment then yes you should definitely buy this device if you're okay with the minor compromises. So I don't know about you. I just wanted to lay it all out there and let you know, but let me know what you think in the comments and let me know what you think of this Chromebook. Is this a good buy? Is it a good buy for 500 or 400? Let me know in the comments. Follow me on Twitter as well. Give me a like and a sub. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash digest Android and watch some other videos as well, which is really awesome and does support my channel. So have a great day. Thank you so much and enjoy your day and enjoy your week.